Hello everyone, my name is Rob Watts and um, today I'm going to be talking about technology and its relationship to electronic music today. The exponential growth of technology over the past 10 years has been somewhat astonishing. The speed and scope of technical change is both dramatic and fascinating and not surprisingly this has had an effect on the electronic music scene. I'd first like to put into some context the different effects of the development of technology on electronic music, and then explore the ideas of one modern-day philosopher to show how his theories of technology in our modern society relate to electronic music today. Here we have the first uh, ever mobile phone, $4,000 when it came out, a massive one hour of talk time, and uh, nearly a kilogram in weight. And this is where we are today, the handheld computing commun communications device. I think these simple analogies really demonstrate how quickly technology has developed in our recent history. This is, uh, this is the ARPANET. This is basically where our internet came from, connecting networks from the east and the west coast of America. The internet has had a profound effect on electronic music production education. The emergence for forums of discussion, social media and video-based websites in particular have transformed the way potential newcomers to electronic music are able to educate themselves. This abundance of information has allowed for a far wider understanding compared to the past. Modern technology now provides an accessible platform for newcomers to learn the foundation of electronic music production. And this has created avenues for professionals to share with amateurs year of knowledge and training, and also provides a cost-effective way of obtaining information and learning in a digestible form. The uh, development of digital audio workstation software, such as Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic and Ableton, have created the opportunity for learning on a traditional scale. This is uh, a picture of the MIDI school up in Manchester. This, the software to run, and also the portability and powerful computers to run, this sort of, to run this sort of classroom would not have been possible without the development of technology. Software can be seen as an extension of transferring ideas into sound. And as technology develops and becomes more advanced, affordable and available, this process of converting one's ideas into creativity and into the medium of music becomes more seamless. Portable and powerful computing technology has dramatically expanded the environments that electronic music can now be produced in. Although not suitable, although not a substitute for being enveloped in one studio with your drum machines and your synths and your speakers, this portability and power has critically created new inputs and influences for the artist. One can now readily write music on the fly, whether it be on a train, plane, automobile, hotel room, or even a small hut in Fiji, power permitting. These additional streams of influence, influence environment, and even human emotion have a powerful knock-on effect on the creative output of how music is produced and ultimately consumed. Technology has allowed the shareability and promotions of all kinds of electronic music on a global scale. This connectivity deconstructs what once may be niche genres and allows these certain niches to be co connected with a wider networked audience. No, elect no electronic music genre is as underground as it was 15 to 20 years ago. Rather than having to go to your local record store and dig through to find the freshest wax, you can now visit sites like YouTube and SoundCloud for one's musical discovery. And I think this is really fascinating because here we see modern technology supporting the analog and the digital is actually now aiding this. Clips of vinyl-only music can now be shared across the internet and it's possible to generate huge amounts of publicity and drive sales of records through this reach, which in turn supports the artist, vinyl sales, record shops, while also keeping the foundations of electronic music alive. However, this is not without its dark side. The technology to rip vinyl at such a high quality has, can have a de detrimental effect on sales and revenue for the artist. However, the promotional advantages of music being shared in this way 
can in fact outweigh the downsides. To support this, vinyl sales have been steadily increasing, and according to some research done by a media agency, Nielsen Soundscan, last year, year-on-year -year sales of vinyl have increased by 3.9 million units. To be precise, that's a 36.63% increase, over a third, which looks good. Has this rise been helped by technological development? I say yes. The ability to fo visit foreign record stores, for me, hard wax in Germany, and find the freshest techno vinyl is amazing. And also, online marketplaces such as Discogs has in no doubt helped this increase. All of this, which could not have been possible without the development of technology and its awesome power to alter the spatial coordinates of our lives. Andrew Feinberg is a prominent philosopher of technology. The foundations of Feinberg theory, Feinberg's theory stem from the works of great thinkers such as Martin Heidegger, Marcuse, Karl Marx and Jacques Ellul. Feinberg looks at technology in our modern society through a wary lens, with his thinkings highlighting issues and properties of technology that are rarely acknowledged in our modern technical society. In a paper written in late 2011, Feinberg discusses what he calls the 10 paradoxes of technology. These paradoxes demonstrate some common misconceptions in our modern society and the relation to technical objects. I feel that there are parallels that can be drawn between Feinberg's paradoxes and the relationship between technology and electronic music. One of the main learnings from Feinberg is that modern societal technologies are perceived as rationalized, purely instrumental, separate from their past, the environment in which they function, and also their operator. This theme is central to the paradoxes in which I relate to electronic music. The first paradox I want to explore is Feinberg's paradox of the action. Here, he describes technology in traditional societies being absorbed into the craft tradition where there is a limit control in place by the craftsman using the technical object. In electronic music, the craftsmen would be the artists and the technical objects, the tools they use to produce. However, the development of technology in our modern society removes the control from the craftsmen and transfers this towards enterprise, whose main goal is profit, regardless of the consequences. Feinberg's insight into technology in modern capitalistic society can be related to electronic music in the sense of electro electronic genres that get pushed from the underground into the commercial, from the hands of the craftsmen into the hands of enterprise. Examples of this are clear today, and recently genres such as, dub as dubstep have fallen foul to this curse. I only speak of the commercial sides of that genre, and of course not the genre as a whole. When the goal becomes capitalistic, we see a dilution and also a pollution of the craft, as the technology used to create is used for capital gain rather than the art. Once enterprise and its goals take control of the craft's tools, technology, and products, electronic music, the factorization and mass production lead to lessons of experience and history becoming easily ignored. This is supported by Feinberg's paradox of the origin and paradox of the frame. Here he describes the forgetfulness in our society when it comes to technical objects and a lack of understanding when it comes to the history behind our technologies. I feel this is very important when it comes to electronic music because the links with technology are inherent in its production and nowadays more than ever they're extremely central in, le in electronic music's creation. In conversations I've had with people sort of less versed about the scene, I often hear, well, it's not that difficult, anyone can make electronic music. Now, the technology exists nowadays certainly makes this comment half true, in the sense of accessibility and usability. However, artists who create the most forward-thinking electronic music have a firm grasp on history and influence behind their creativity and they use this knowledge, of this, this knowledge of influence and history to develop their own unique sound. An analogy of the importance of foundations can be seen in philosophy itself. The building blocks of philosophy from Socrates to Friedrich Nietzsche, Karl Marx and the Frankfurt School provide the base in which modern philosophical thinking is developed, and without these concrete foundations and understandings, 
modern philosophical thinking is difficult to contextualize and validate. This example should be true to electronic music itself. The foundation and history must be transferred and educated to new electronic music producers and not lost behind the guise of overly rationalized modern day technology. It may be inevitable that once a genre becomes commercially viable, it gets diluted. But it's important, especially now, when technology is moving forward at such a rapid rate, that history, craft and skills behind electronic music and its specific genres are celebrated in order to pr protect the puristic forms that, fa that form the foundation of electronic music. What all electronic artists and musicians need to focus on is not only the study of the social and historical aspect of their craft, but also delve into its technological history. So I say let's welcome technological development and move forward within our craft, whilst embracing and fully understanding the origins and heritage of electronic music. Thanks for listening.